It is Emmy season, and if it doesn't feel like Emmy season because nothing has aired in the last 10 months, you are not wrong. As Atlanta, Barry, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Dead to Me, The Great, Insecure, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Master of None, Rami, Russian Doll, and What We Do in the Shadows are all taking the season off, uh, just in the comedy field. And of course, The Big Bang Theory, Fleabag, Glow, The Good Place, Modern Family, Schitt's Creek, Silicon Valley, Transparent, Unbreakable, Kimmy Schmidt, Veep, and Will and Grace are of course uh, off the air as they have all ended. So what will be nominated in the comedy categories? Uh, definitely Ted Lasso and The Flight Attendant. Uh, apparently half a season of Pen15 aired. Uh, apparently Blackish is still on the air. And according to Critics' Choice, uh, Mom is also still on the air. Uh, I don't really know what else there is to say about the comedy field this year. Uh, inevitably, eight comedies will be nominated. Tony, what are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's quite the list. I mean, you, you, I can imagine like a teleprompter running in like a, you know, kind of a marathon Olympic hundred yard dash with all those titles. Um, I, I think that... I think the two. I think the two that that we that you mentioned, Ted Lasso, is Ted Lasso uh, is obviously in front. Um, uh, it certainly has the buzz right now with Golden Globes and Critics' Choice. The Flight Attendant is obviously a really buzzy show, um, and giving Kaylee Cuoco really the sh the showcase that she deserves. Everything else is kind of, I think, up in the air. I think you've got a, a good combination of network shows, uh, streamers, cable shows. You've got things like Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, uh, which I think could break through. Um, Pen15, which you mentioned. You could also get something like Emily in Paris or Search Party, uh, or even maybe one of the more zeitgeisty shows like Cobra Kai. That show has a really passionate following, especially since it went to Netflix. Um, and because of the length of the episodes, it technically qualifies as a... Uh, as a comedy and um, like many other shows before, whether it's should or not, that's another story altogether. Um, but I think there are quite a number of contenders in here that um, could contend, that could contend. I don't think the field is as barren as we might think it is. Okay, and what do you think, Charlie? Yeah, I'm kind of on the same page as Tony. I mean, it feels like Ted Lasso just is a uh, front runner by default, but the thing that's good, that's good, that's so hard about this is that usually you have you have an abundance to choose from, but then you also have what's going to make what 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 are people passionate about, and because of the pandemic and the and the limited number of options, that's a lot harder to gauge. So, like what Tony said, I have Cobra Kai getting in because I because I think that has a lot of uh, passion a lot of passionate support. But that could also that that's something that could also uh, we don't know how that's going to affect something like Blackish, which uh, uh, it wasn't nominated the past couple of years, was it? No, no. So now I it's mean, on it's, season seven. So and so, yeah, is 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 are people going to return to it, or are they going to say, you know, I have I have uh, I have different interests elsewhere, and I'm I'm excited to see what this leads to. I will be. Uh, very, I, I will be very surprised to see what the upper uh, tier of uh, accurate predictions uh, are this year in terms of our users, in terms of uh, getting like, you know, what the percentage is of their accuracy. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's kind of just a crapshoot at this moment. And Rob, uh, why don't you uh, end this video for us? <laughs> Well, you know, when I first did my predictions, like we all do, um, you know, the prediction center opened not long ago. Um, great job, by the way, Riley and Chris Peachum. Um, I, I firstly thought, wow, this comedy field is actually quite thin, um, unusually so, and a lot of that has to do with the pandemic. And, um, but then I started thinking, you know, this is a really great opportunity to get some new blood in this category and something a bit different and out of left field, which always excites me at the Emmys. Sometimes they do it uh, regardless of whether the 
feel this competitive or not. Um, in this case, there's a lot of really interesting stuff like what the guys have already mentioned. Um, Cobra Kai, for example, has exploded in terms of popularity. I'm so glad people are finally finding that show guy when it aired, sorry, streamed on YouTube. Not many people really had access to it because you had to pay for it. Um, so yeah, something like Cobra Kai could really do well. Um, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist unfortunately missed out last year. I think it will hopefully do better for NBC this time. Um, and, and, and if for no other reason than because Riley, you're one of the stars of the show. Um, <laughs> If I could just mention a couple of shows that I think are on the bubble that aren't getting talked about much these days, apart from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which I don't think will air its final season until the fall. Oh, yeah, that's another one I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's going to air in time because um, it will air in the fall of 2021. So, um, but look, I th I'll, I'll really actually hope for, and don't don't throw a thumb, abuse me online, but The Connors, that's actually a really good show. And I know the Roseanne thing, which happened a few years ago, still has a bit of a stain on that show. But if, if anyone ever actually takes the time to watch it, it's really good. Um, and Lisa Goranson was nominated at the Critics' Choice a few weeks ago, um, which kind of gives you some indication that the show is not a complete dumpster fire that people might think it is because of Roseanne. Also, um, there's a show that's been on NBC for some time that's really never made any waves apart from a, a sole nomination for, um, for Victor Santos, I think his name is, and that's Superstore. That is a really, really good show. That's also been streaming on Netflix, at least it has been in Australia. Um, it's really started to become more popular with people, and I'm hoping a show like that might actually make into the top eight. There's eight slots here, so there's a lot of potential and opportunity for something really interesting. That was a long way of saying I have no freaking clue. It's the final season too, isn't it? Yes, it is, and it's a pandemic season, so it's really topical, and they they touch a lot on you know what was going on with frontline workers and retail workers in the pandemic. They're wearing masks. It's hilarious. It's a really really good show. It's a show with not without America Ferrera, so she left after the first two episodes, um, and you can just see how strong that cast is, even without its leading star. So I'm hoping that it will actually make it in. Apart from that, there's Dickinson on Apple TV Plus. Mm. There's um, Kaminsky Method is still in the running, although that's not a show that I would necessarily nominate. But of course, it's still absolutely in the running. And then you've got things, I'm just looking at the list, like things that I've not really heard of yet, like Mr. Mayor. I don't know much about that, but it's got Ted Danson. So that's obviously something we need to keep an eye on. Love Victor could actually um, make, make a play uh, if, if it has enough support amongst the Academy. And then you've got other things like Young Sheldon, which has been quite popular on broadcast TV for some time. So... This is actually more exciting than we're giving it credit for. Yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, normally, this time of year, we look for the spring premieres, and you know that's when they try to air their best shows so that they're the last thing that voters see. But this year, I think if it's not on the schedule already, I don't know if it's going to come just because post-production takes longer and shooting takes longer. I mean, back when we were making the Prediction Center, I thought sex education would be ready in time. But it turns out they're actually still filming. So I took it out of all my predictions. Um, uh, for example, Netflix, they've provided the press the complete season of The Upshaws already, which is a show that comes out May 12th. Uh, the cutoff is May 31st. So if we don't get uh, you know, other shows from Netflix in the next couple of weeks, uh, that's pr pretty much it. Showtime has just announced uh, the return of Black Monday and The Chai, uh, but they, actually are not going to be entering those for Emmy consideration this year. So we're already getting premiere dates for shows that are for next season. So whatever you see in the Prediction Center, that might be it. Uh, and it actually might be more than uh, is actually eligible since we don't have confirmation on stuff like Dave or Sex Education. It's interesting that you say that because I had seen, um, I had seen in the Prediction Center uh, one of my favorite shows that I don't think gets nearly enough uh, attention, and that's uh, Shrill on um, on Hulu, the uh, the show that's you know created, produced, uh, and stars Aidy Bryant. Um, the first two seasons of that show were just absolute masterpieces, and the third and final season is supposed to air um, is supposed to drop on Hulu in the uh, first week of May. So literally right uh, in that sweet spot of the cutoff time. And that could bode well uh, for a show like that. That show's gotten certainly its fair share of critical um, love. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 I, think, I think you're exactly right. I think 
we're so dependent on usually we're so used to these big crop of spring shows that we don't just seem to have now so it's like whatever's coming that's it and then it's that versus pretty much what we've already seen um yeah. you know it's 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 actually yeah. kind of exciting in a weird way it is you know i would i will also say I, i'm pretty sure that most of, a lot of the saturday night live cast will do quite well in the supporting and guest categories um, because they're quite thin, relatively speaking. I also wanted to mention, to, to correct myself, it's not Victor Santos, it's Nico Santos from Superstore. Um, yeah, so there's, the acting categories are going to be even more interesting than the comedy series race, because who knows who the hell is going to make it in those. Like, it's really, really good opportunity for people to start um, vouching for their favourites and for the studios and platforms and networks to really start pumping them out in terms of advertising, because who knows who the hell is going to make it in. It's, it's actually cool. It's a good thing. Yeah, we have a couple of new shows coming out. Uh, one is called Hacks, and that one is from Mike Schur, and it's going to be on HBO Max. It's starring Gene Smart. Uh, so that could be good. We've got Rutherford Falls coming out, uh, starring Ed Helms, and that one is on Peacock. So we'll see if people can find that one. We'll see if these two shows are any good. And if they are, I think they could get a uh, boatload of nominations. Uh, Ted Lasso is a show that normally I would predict for... Uh, just Jason Sudeikis and uh, Hannah Waddingham in the acting categories. And then because of the pandemic, you know, I thought, okay, Juno Temple, she seems pretty safe. And then when we actually launched the Prediction Center, I went in and uh, now I'm predicting it to get four supporting actor nominations, which I think is probably more than any first year comedy ever has. So. It's possible. It's such a great show. I hope it wins everything. It's already swept kind of at the Globes and the Greeks' choice. Um, in turn, just, it, well, what I should say is it, it, over, uh, it exceeded my expectations. Um, but, and uh, I'm, I can't wait to watch it again. It, it was one of those shows that was not only so funny, but also ex really heartfelt and moving. And, um, and it was just like a beautiful, soothing balm um, in, in a really shitty year. So <laughs> I expect it to do very well. I think one curveball that could make this race uh, even more exciting is if the Emmys reject uh, the flight attendant's submission as a comedy. Since it is an hour long, they have to appeal to the Academy, uh, but by default, it's actually in drama. And you know, as we know, uh, they do reject things like a couple of years ago, the teen sex comedy, Sex Education was ruled a drama. So they can certainly rule uh, the flight attendant a drama. And then, um, yeah, who knows? Yeah. That would be a nightmare. That would make it much more difficult. Drama is very, very full, as we're going to talk about at some point. Um, yeah, I hope that I'm sure the flight attendant HBO Max are trying very hard to ensure that it remains in comedy. <clears throat> uh, also, say about Blackish, you know, that's a show that I feel like is definitely getting nominated just because it has been before. But like last year, Jennifer Lewis didn't even submit for consideration, is, I guess she or the show or somebody figured that it was just so far gone at that point. That's interesting. Uh, Charlie, we haven't heard from you in a while. Now you're hearing from me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's like, I mean, you would, like what you were saying about Blackish, it feels like something that would be, you know, would just be, okay, since it's a thinner field, it would just make it in there. But if people aren't passionate about it, then, you know, it, which it seems like they haven't been as much over the past couple of years, uh, it, and and albeit the the the, the we've never seen uh, even when it made it into comedy series we've never seen it really take off and below the line I don't think it's even gotten below the line nominations uh, just in the costumes yeah right, uh, other yeah, than yeah, costumes yeah. yeah so I mean it's so I mean it's it's a it's a show that's it's gotten in some of the major ones but it's always struggled elsewhere so it, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see that even to see that left out even in this thinner field. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll come back and uh, that's comedy for you.